and welcome to the 2020 Mastermind Grand Final with me, John Humphreys. The first finalist in the spotlight tonight is Julie Bungie, a history teacher from North London who will be answering questions on the Wars of the Roses. Lewis Barn, a trainee solicitor from Glasgow, his specialist subject, the ancient universities of Scotland. Margaret Scott Johnson, a freelance translator from Rothbury, takes as her subject the number one Ladies Detective Agency series of novels. Dave McBrien, a pub quiz master from Edinburgh, answers questions on The View, a Skewniverse films of Kevin Smith. Emma Laslett, a disability benefits officer from Milton Keynes, her subject, The Stonewall Riots. And our final finalist, Jethro Waldron, a civil servant from Belfast, who will be answering questions on the artist Vermeer. All six of them have, of course, battled their way through the heats and the semi-finals. And this is the moment of truth. They face the prospect of the black chair yet again, and the rules are the same. Two minutes on their specialist subject, two and a half minutes on general knowledge. What's different is that one of them will leave tonight with the coveted title of Mastermind Champion. They will also take with them this magnificent glass bowl, which has been made by the same designer since Mastermind began way back in 1972. His name is Dennis Mann, and he's with us in the studio tonight. So let's get on with it and ask our first finalist to join us, please. And your name is? Julie Bungie. Your occupation? History teacher. And your specialist subject? The Wars of the Roses. I've chosen the Wars of the Roses. That is my absolute ultimate specialist subject. I've studied it for over 40 years now. And it's a subject that I'm really, really passionate about. There were battles, there were exiles, there were people locked up in towers and never seen again. I mean, what's not to like about that period? Today is a really exciting day for us at Yavna College. We're so proud that our very own Miss Bungie has got to the Mastermind National Final, which is an amazing thing. So I want you to give a massive round of applause to Miss Bungie. <laughs> And the students, they're just so excited, I think, to see Miss on the telly, you know, and they're going to find out what my first name is. And your name is? Julie Bungie. Which will be, you know, really exciting for them. No day is the same. It's never boring. And also, it gives me a chance to just talk about history to my students and educate them and get them through their exams. Yeah, so I think Miss Bungie's got through to the final because she's so hardworking. She's amazingly, like, clever. So Miss Bungie's been our teacher for the past two years and she's been absolutely amazing. She's got us amazing results. She's taught us how to revise. She's taught us so many vital things we need to know for the exams and now it's just her turn to shine. But you learn something new every day with her. In regards to my quizzing accomplishments, I was in top of the form in 1980 and I was in a winning team. But I haven't really done anything since that. First place, she squeaked it with 20 points, Julie. The first heat, I was just... I couldn't believe I won. As the, the programme continued, it suddenly dawned on me that I was in with a chance. And I think at one point, I actually felt quite horrified. Of, oh, no, I've got to come back and do this, do this all again. If I can inspire somebody else out there, or even inspire one of my own students to continue their study in history, I'd be very, very happy. I can't believe that somebody like me, an ordinary teacher, could even get this far. So I don't know, it's just going to be such an amazing experience. What I plan to do with the Mastermind Trophy Bowl is to put it in the school trophy cabinet. I think it would be really, really good for my students to see how important intrinsic motivation is. And, you know, hopefully it will inspire them to work hard and achieve their goals. You never know, you could be like me. I never, ever thought that I would get this far. Thank you very much. Um, I hope that I'll be able to do not only 
you proud, but also Yavna proud in the final. So thank you for your good wishes. <laughs> Wars of the Roses, it's a series of wars during the 15th century between the houses of Lancaster and York. Here we go. Two minutes, starting now. In 1422, which Lancastrian king ascended the English throne at the age of just nine months? He was later described by his chaplain, John Blackman, as being chaste and pure from the beginning of his days. Henry VI. Yep. A major factor in the cause of the wars was the rivalry between the Duke of Somerset, a favourite of Henry VI, and Richard, Duke of York. In 1446, Somerset succeeded York to an important official post overseas. Which post? Uh, Calais. Lieutenant of France. The First Battle of St Albans in 1455 ended in defeat for the Lancastrians, and among the dead was York's enemy, the Duke of Somerset. He was killed outside which public house? The castle. Yes. Shortly after the death of Richard of York at Wakefield in 1460, his son, the future Edward IV, won a battle against the Lancastrian forces of the Earls of Pembroke and Wiltshire. Which battle was it? Mortimer's Cross. Yes. The first day of fighting at the Battle of Towton in March 1461 was focused on access to a river where the two sides clashed as the Yorkists tried to rebuild a broken bridge. Which river? Uh, the River Eyre. Yes. In 1464, Edward IV married Elizabeth Woodville, the daughter of Richard Woodville. What was the name of Elizabeth's mother, who'd previously been married to the Duke of Bedford? Jacquetta. Yep. Which battle of 1471 resulted in the capture of Margaret of Anjou and the death of Edward, Prince of Wales? Shakespeare. Correct. In 1475, Margaret of Anjou was returned to Louis XI of France, where her ransom was paid. Before this, she'd spent four years as a prisoner in the custody of a former lady-in-waiting. Which one? Uh, Duchess of Sus Suffolk. Yes. After the death of Richard III at the Battle of Bosworth in 1485, a nobleman is said to have picked up the discarded crown and placed it on Henry Tudor's head. Henry subsequently made him the Earl of Derby. What was his name? Lord Stanley. Yep. Henry VII's claim to the English throne was through his mother, Margaret Beaufort. She was descended from Edward III's son, John of Gaunt, and the mistress whom he subsequently married. What was her full name? Catherine Swineford. Correct. In 1487, the pretender, Lambert Simnel, who was posing as the young Earl of Warwick, was proclaimed King of England and France and crowned in Dublin. What name and regnal number was he given? Edward VI. Is correct. No passes, Julie. You have scored ten points. And our next finalist, please. And your name is? Lewis Barn. Your occupation? Trini Solicitor. And your chosen subject? The Ancient Universities of Scotland. My subject for the final is the Ancient Universities of Scotland, and that's why we've come here today to the University of Glasgow, which is Scotland's second ancient university. Just behind me is the Stair Building, which serves as the law school of the university, where I studied from 2013 to 2018. I have a couple of quizzing accomplishments. Um, at the age of 19, I was one of the youngest competitors, both at the British Quizzing Championships and subsequently the World Quizzing Championships. Which figure of Greek mythology does that... In my final year of university, I represented Glasgow University on the BBC's University Challenge, at which my team and I got to the quarterfinals. Glasgow Barn. Icarus. Icarus is correct, yes. That broke the 40-year record for Glasgow as a whole. My biggest supporters are, without doubt, and my friends Freya, James and Cameron, who make up the remaining three quarters of the University Challenge team. Um, since I started my mastermind journey, they've been behind me every step of the way, asking me general knowledge questions and testing me on my specialist subjects. So I really don't think I would have got through to the final if it wasn't for their support. So, more nervous, less nervous than previous rounds? I've got nothing to lose now. If I win, that's great. And if not, I've still made it to the Mastermind final, so I'm happy enough as it is. In my eyes, no matter what happens, he's always our Mastermind winner. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my specialist subject for the final is the ancient universities of Scotland, which consists of St Andrews, Edinburgh, Aberdeen and Glasgow. I'm on many of the universities, I have between six and 700 questions. So by the time I've completed my preparation, I should have just shy of 3,000 questions. So all I can hope is that John Humphreys asked me 13 of those in the grand final. Well, I would simply love to be the youngest mastermind winner. Um, at the age of 24, I would just about beat um, the record held by Gavin Fuller, who became the youngest winner in 1983. And the 21st mastermind champion is Gavin Fuller. 
So as the final fast approaches, do you have any tips for me? Go in, feel confident enough in your own specialist subjects and then cross your fingers when it comes to general knowledge because you never know what you're going to get. And the competition will be very tough in the final, but I know that I've done well enough in my preparation in my specialist subject to enable me to win this competition and lift the Mastermind Trophy. Two minutes on the ancient universities of Scotland starting now. In the governance structure shared by the four universities, the university court is chaired by an official elected by the student body. Now, typically a celebrity or political figure. What's the official's title? Rector. Yeah. The court of the University of Edinburgh tried to abolish the right of the rector to chair court meetings after a student who went on to a notable career in British politics was elected to the post in 1972. Who was he? Kennedy. Gordon Brown. King's College, the first constituent of what's now the University of Aberdeen, was founded in 1495 by the local bishop in order to educate a local population he described as rude and ignorant of letters, almost barbarous. What was his name? Elphinstone. Yep. A botanic garden on the King's College campus of the University of Aberdeen is named in honour of the woman who donated the land to the university in 1898. What was her name? Grey. Crookshank. The University of Aberdeen had no official hall of residence until 1960 when it opened what's believed to have been the first mixed sex hall of residence in Britain. What's it called? University Hall. Crombie Hall. The original site of the University of Glasgow was gifted by a local nobleman in return for daily prayers for himself and his family. What was his name? Sullivan. Hamilton, an annual festivity of the University of St Andrews which typically culminates in a mass foam fight is named after a food item which first-year students traditionally gave to more senior students as part of a ritual. What food? Reason. Yep. The leader of a group of seven women who matriculated at the University of Edinburgh's medical school in 1869 went on to found an independent school of medicine for women in the city. What was her name? Elizabeth Garrett. Jex Blake. Daft Friday, an annual celebration in honour of the president of the Glasgow University Union, is said to have been invented in 1905 by a student who went on to become a playwright. By what pseudonym is he best known? Brady. Yes. In 2017, the University of Aberdeen opened a new campus outside the UK in partnership with the Alphale Group for Educational and Academic Services. In which country? Qatar. Yeah. In 1814, Start it's all finished. There were fears that the University of St Andrews might not survive. The University Senate considered a proposal to move the entire university to a rural town in south-west Scotland. Which town? Dumfries. Is correct. No passes, Lewis. You have six points. <laughs> And our next finalist, please. And your name is? Marga Scott Johnson. Your occupation? Freelance translator. And your chosen subject? The number one ladies' detective agency novels by Alexander McCall Smith. <laughs> I was born in the Netherlands in 1964 in a hospital in Amsterdam, but I grew up in a place called Amstelveen. Uh, I took part in the Netherlands in a quiz called Megabrain, which is the Dutch version of Mastermind. Fast forward to 1997, I became aware of the Mastermind Club, a club of former contestants on the show, where I met this nice man, Keith. Of course, you all know what my Mastermind Club membership led to. I married this lovely man, Keith. Ah, uh, uh, yes, the Mastermind marriage. Who could forget it? Keith and I were on the same program of the 1987 mm. series. Your name, please? Keith Scott. Occupation? Chartered accountant. And your chosen specialised subject? The life and career of William George Armstrong. And your chosen subject? The industrialist William Armstrong. I had four lovely years with Keith, and it, it's a pity he died so young. That's, that's one of the reasons why I took Lord Armstrong as my specialist subject mm -hmm. this year. It was a tribute to him. I don't think I did as well as he did, but I gave it my best shot. And in first place, Marga. My specialist subject in the final is the number one ladies' detective agency novels by Alexander McCall Smith. Um, they're very positive, they're full of humour. Um, he's written 21 now. Um, he publishes one every year. And by now, I feel the characters are like family to me. As I'm reading the books, I think sometimes, oh, that could be a question, and then I make a note of it. In this book, Mara Motspa finds out she has a sister. A sister is a nurse. Sister is nurse. Sister lives in Lobatsa. Lobatsa. 
but you never know. I've no idea how the questions are going to pan out. I never thought I would get to the final of Mastermind, so winning it is still a dream for me. If, however, by some miracle I should win it, I would very much like to dedicate the trophy to Keith. Without him, I wouldn't be here today. I would also like to dedicate it to the Mastermind Club, who have been tremendously supportive over the years. Um, they're like my family in Britain, and I hope that our friendship will last a lot longer. Those famous novels written by the Scottish author Alexander McCall Smith about a detective agency in Botswana, founded by Ma Ramotswe, the number one ladies' detective agency novels in two minutes starting now. The number one ladies' detective agency series is set primarily in which city in Botswana? Gaborone. Yeah. Throughout her career as a private detective, Ma Ramotswe refers to an investigation manual called The Principles of Private Detection. What's the name of the author of the manual? Clovis Anderson. Yes. In the first book, Ma Ramotswe employs Ma Makutsi as her secretary. She comes highly recommended by the Botswana College of Secretarial and Office Skills, where she has just passed their examinations with what average grade? 97%. Yes. On its opening day, the number one ladies' detective agency is visited by a woman searching for her missing husband. Ma Ramotswe discovers the husband's been eaten by a crocodile. What's the client's name? Uh, Peter Malazzi. That's yes. the, the husband. <laughs> yeah, Malazzi, yes. In which book in the series is Ma Ramotswe employed by Ma Holonga, the owner of a chain of hairdressing salons, to assess the suitability of four potential husbands? A full cupboard of life. Correct. In tea time for the traditionally built, Ma Makutsi cooks a meal for fiancé Puti Radifuti. She finds it too spicy, but Puti says, I am a very lucky man to be marrying somebody who can make what? Piri Piri Chicken? Yes. What's the full name of the car repair business owned and run by Mr. J.L.B. Matakoni, Mara Motswe's friend, admirer, and later in the series, her second husband? To look when wrote Speedy Motors. Correct. Mara Motswe had a brief unhappy marriage to a musician named Note Makoti. What instrument does Note play? A trumpet. Yes. In Tears of the Giraffe, when Mara Motswe gives Ma Zbago a lift in her van, the two of them discuss the best type of men to marry. Ma Zbago says you should try to marry a policeman, a mechanic, or a minister of religion, and you should never marry a politician, a barman, or... A lawyer? A taxi driver. Oh. In the Kalahari Typing School for Men, Puzo, one of the orphans fostered by Mara Motsvi and Mr. J.L.B. Matakoni, gets into trouble for killing a bird with a catapult. What bird? A hoopo. Yes. In the full cupboard of life, Mr. J.L.B. Matakoni is asked to help raise money for the orphanage by taking part in a sponsored event. One of his apprentices, Charlie, later agrees to take his place. What's he sponsored to do? A parachute jump. It is indeed. Margaret, no passes. You have ten points. And our next finalist, please. And your name is? Dave McBrien. Your occupation? Pub quiz master. And your chosen subject? The View of Skewniverse films of Kevin Smith. Welcome one and all to Thursday night at the Southside, which is our pub quiz night, if you didn't already know. I basically got into presenting pub quizzes very much by accident. I ended up doing a few for society I was involved with when I was a student, and then by the time I graduated, I'd written thousands of questions, so I thought I might as well start making some money out of them. I met uh, my wife, Lindsay, at a pub quiz. I would only see him once a month when he came in, um, but I, you know, developed a bit of a crush, shall we say, and um, the rest is history, I guess. My main interest and hobby was fencing. I uh, got into it as a student and uh, I got completely hooked. So let the other person advance in on you uh, uh, and te tempt them to attack, and as they come in, pick them off. Fencing has definitely helped me in quizzing, in, in, just in terms of experience under pressure, fast reactions help in any quiz with buzzers involved, and that sort of competitive instinct uh, comes in in both as well. So my special subject for the final is the viewer's universe films of Kevin Smith. It's a series of films that's very much of its time, uh, I, but I kind of grew up with them, I guess. In the first film, Clerks, is a couple of 22-year-old slackers working in a convenience store, and I was very much, a, well, I was a slacker working a bar job at the time uh, at about the same age. OK, well, uh, I mean, certainly I found the semi-final moderately stressful. What was it like for you guys in the audience? Well, for me, I found it... A little bit nerve-wracking. Yeah, I found it very, very, very nerve-wracking. I was, I was quaking by the time it came to the end of it. 
I couldn't believe how cool you were. I hope you can stay as cool as you did at the semi-final. You will. You will. You'll, you'll fly through it if you do. You can do it. Well, let's hope so. <laughs> See you then. Bye. Okay. Thanks. I guess as a wife and a teammate, the advice I would give Dave is, you know, you know your stuff, you can do it, have confidence in yourself, maintain focus, and do the best you can, and whatever happens, happens, and we're all proud. Well, if it was to win, it would obviously be incredible. Mastermind still has that uh, reputation, and it's so well known beyond the world of competitive quizzing. What would make me a worthy winner? I guess answering more questions than the others. The Viewersk Universe Films, a series of films written and directed by the American filmmaker Kevin Smith in two minutes, starting now. The films have various characters, plot points and locations in common. Many of these locations are in the American state where Kevin Smith was born and grew up. Which state? New Jersey. Yep, in Smith's first film as director, Clerks, after the shopkeeper Dante Hicks arrives at a quick stop grocery store to find the locks for the shutters have been vandalized with chewing gum. He creates a sign for customers which he hangs outside the store. What does the sign read? I, sh I assure you we're open. Yep. Which actor plays four different small parts in Clerks? These characters are named in the credits as Woolen Cap Smoker, Eggman, Offended Customer, and Cat Admiring, a Bitter Customer. Flanagan. The actor also appears in Clerks 2 as Packer Smokes Guy. Flanagan. Correct. Mall Rats was filmed in a real shopping center, but many of the stores featured in the film have fictional names. These include clothes shops called Fashionable Male and Popular Girl and a tanning salon with what name? Uh Burning flesh. Yes. In Mole Rats, when T.S. finds out that Rene has dumped Brody, Brody tells him that hell hath no fury like a woman scorned for... Sega. Yes. In the end credits of Mole Rats, Smith thanks a number of people who helped with or inspired the film, such as Sean, for bringing a pedigree to the project. Whom does he thank for deciding not to hike around the world? Scott Moser. Yep. In Chasing Amy, what's the title of the comic book series created by the character Elisa Jones? Uh, idiosyncratic routine. Correct. When Holden and Alyssa play darts in Chasing Amy, they're in a bar standing in front of some graffiti that's written on the wall between two toilet doorways. The graffiti reads, and on the eighth day God created... Beer. Yes. In Dogma, Bartleby kills a police officer outside St. Michael's Church after telling him, don't make me angry, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. What's the name of the policeman? McPhee. McGee. <sighs> Which Oscar-winning composer wrote the music for Dogma? Uh, Shore. Yes. In Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, four women pose as an animal liberation group and persuade Jay and Bob to rescue an orangutan from a lab. This turns out to be a distraction while the women rob a nearby building, which belongs to what company? The Colorado Diamond Exchange. Is correct. No passes, Dave. You have scored ten points. <laughs> And our next finalist, please. And your name is? Emma Laslett. Your occupation? Disability Benefits Officer. And your chosen subject? The Stonewall Riots. My specialist subject for the finals, the Stonewall Riots, which I chose because I think it's so important to shine a light on bits of history that not everybody knows about. It's more than just a specialist subject. It was a very real event that improved the lives of millions of people in a very real way. In 2014, when I was on Mastermind before, I got to the semi-finals. I was on Only Connect with my dad and my brother. It's just what we do in my family all the time. And it, it's just become a way of life at this point. Emma's main strong point is her reaction time. Her brain just works so fast. Which American prison? Alcatraz. Yes. Which novel? The War of the Worlds. Yeah. Which country? Egypt. Yep. On a show like Mastermind where you can be thinking of the answer while being asked, asked the question, so you're ready to give an answer quickly. Which character? Taker. Yep. It's a massive advantage. Which river? Rubicon. Yep. My dad was on this season of Mastermind. He went out in the first round, so he's been, you know, giving me some ideas of how to reclaim some family honor there. My family have been just an amazing support network. Without them, I just wouldn't have got this far, both in terms of supporting me through the whole journey and just constantly peppering me with quiz questions to keep me on my toes. <sighs> Whenever Emma's quizzing, she goes into what I call quiz mode. We don't get a smile, and people think she's some strange information nerd. But they don't see Emma 
who, who laughs, who makes me laugh a lot, who is very soft-hearted. I do introduce her to people sometimes as, this is my daughter, Emma. She was a mastermind semi-finalist. I'm hoping <laughs> my daughter, the mastermind champion, <laughs> is the next on the list. <laughs> I'm very much the queen of imposter syndrome. I'm convinced that nothing I do is actually any good. But, you know, if I go out this time, I'll just have to come back a third time. <laughs> Keep coming back until you give me a bowl. <laughs> Stonewall riots. The events in the summer of 1969 when gay people fought back against discrimination. Two minutes. In the early hours of Saturday, June 28th, 1969, there was a raid on the Stonewall Inn, a popular gay barn in the Greenwich Village area of New York City. The raid was led by a deputy inspector from the New York Police Department, Models Division. What was his name? Seymour Pine. Yep. The Stonewall's doorman, Frank Esselorn, admitted to the club only those people he thought were gay, and he was arrested by the police during the raid, but managed to escape. He was usually known by what nickname? Blonde Frankie. Yep. The crowd outside the Stonewall Inn turned violent when a gay woman was physically forced into a police car. Which prominent folk singer was seized by the police and handcuffed to a radiator inside the Stonewall after a policeman was hit? Dave Van Ronk. Yep. The man whom Dave Van Ronk was accused of injuring in the riot was the only uniformed officer left on the scene after police vehicles had taken the first prisoners away. What was his name? Gil Weissman. Yes. The police barricaded themselves inside the Stonewall after the crowd of angry protesters attacked them. The Stonewall's doors were broken open when an object was uprooted and used as a battering ram. What object? A parking meter. Yep. On Sunday, June 29th, the New York Daily News printed an article about the riots and a photo that showed protesters, including a blonde youth called Jackie Holmona, in a confrontation with the police. Who took the photograph? Fred McDowell. Ambrosini. What was the name of the drag queen who climbed a lamppost and dropped a weighted bag onto an empty police car? The bag smashed the car's windscreen. Marsh P. Johnson. Yes. New York's riot squad, the TPF, arrived on the scene and attacked the rioters. What do the letters TPF stand for? Tactical Patrol Force. Yep. What was the title of the television show from the 1950s whose theme tune was borrowed by protesters to create a song to taunt the police? They changed the lyrics so that it opened with the words, We are the Stonewall Girls, we wear our hair in curls. Uh, how do you do Yep. The riots died down on the Monday and Tuesday after two days of clashes, but restarted on the Wednesday evening after two articles about the riots that used homophobic language were published in a local newspaper. Which one? The Village Voice. Yes. Which of the beat poets visited the Stonewall Inn after the riots had died down? He noted the people he saw there had changed and said, the guys there were so beautiful, they've lost that wounded look. Alan Gensberg. Is correct. No passes, Emma. You have ten points. And our final finalist, please. And your name is? Jethro Waldron. Your occupation? Civil servant. And your chosen subject? Johannes Vermeer. For the final, I chose to do the artist Vermeer, who's an artist that I've had an interest in for many years now. Um, I absolutely love his paintings. I've tried to spend as much time with my specialist subject as possible. Um, because it's an artistic subject, I've tried to set some time aside where I can just really sit and look and immerse myself in these beautiful paintings, but also reading a lot about Vermeer's life. I really need to immerse myself in the details and the story that's being told so that whatever question's asked, hopefully there's enough in there that the answer will come out. They tell absolutely brilliant stories and they're, they're beautifully painted. Being on the mastermind set is quite forbidding. When you're walking to the chair, honestly, each time I've done it, I just hope that I don't trip up or I don't look like I've got a really funny daft walk or something like that. But once you're sat in the chair, honestly, it's the comfiest chair you will ever sit in. And you soon get comfortable um, and you just focus on answering the questions. No passes. You have scored 12 points. <laughs> I think Mastermind is a great show. I love the fact that it's general knowledge, but you also get to pick subjects that you're really interested in, that mean a lot to you. You always put something of yourself into, into a round of Mastermind. Um, so it's been a great mix for me. Hello. Hello. I, I can't see you. Oh, sorry. Can you see it now? Yeah. There we go. Are you looking forward to coming to see the final? Yeah. Yeah, a bit nervous. Yeah. How are you? 
Yeah, it is a bit nerve-wracking, isn't it, for everyone? Do your best, Jennifer. That's Thanks. all you can do. Just do your best. Enjoy the experience. I'll win. <laughs> I'll try my best. <laughs> Good luck for the mastermind final. Thank you. So my achievement really is just to win both for myself and for everyone around me. I've got so many people out there that I know from different bits of my life, from different places who are cheering me on. So really just to do it for all of those people who've supported me. Vermeer, the 17th century Dutch painter who lived for most of his short life in Delft. Two minutes starting now. One of Vermeer's earliest surviving works show a mythological figure and her companions, one of whom is washing her feet. Which mythological figure? Diana. Yep, on October 31st, 1632, Vermeer was baptised at which church in Delft? The Newer Kirk. Yes, what was the name of Vermeer's wealthy mother-in-law with whom he and his wife Katharina were living by 1660? Maria Tins. Yes. When he joined the Guild of St. Luke in 1653, Vermeer had to pay an admission fee. He paid a quarter of it initially and the rest two and a half years later. How many guilders was the fee? Six guilders. Yes. In 1903, Vermeer's best-known work, Girl with a Pearl Earring, was bequeathed to the Mauritz House Museum in The Hague by a collector who'd bought it around two decades earlier for just two guilders. What was his name? An de saint de Tombe. Yes. Which of Vermeer's paintings features a woman sitting in the doorway of a house, another in its courtyard, and two children playing on the pavement in front of it? It's sometimes known as View of Houses in Delft. The Little Street. Yes. In 1672, Vermeer and Hans Jorens assessed some paintings that had been offered by an art dealer to the Grand Lecture of Brandenburg as not outstanding paintings, but to the contrary, great pieces of rubbish. What was the name of the art dealer? Gerrit Uhlenburg. Gerrit Uhlenburg. Yes, Vermeer's painting, A View of Delft, shows the Skeedham Gate on one side of the stone bridge and which twin turreted gate on the other side? The Rotterdam Gate. Yes, a fellow painter whose works include the chess players served with Vermeer as a headman of the Guild of St. Luke in 1662 and again in 1671. What was his name? Cornelis de Man. Yes, in the Vermeer painting Young Woman with the Lute, the finials of the chair in the foreground are in the shape of the head of what creature? Lion. Yes, one of Vermeer's smaller surviving works was auctioned in Paris in 1817 and credited to Van der Meer of Delft, whose pictures, according to the citation, are extremely rare and sought after. It was eventually bought by the Louvre in 1817. What is its title? The Lace Maker. Yes, a book entitled Vermeer and His Milieu, first published in 1989, was written by an historian who discovered new information about the artist, including that many of his works had been produced for his patron, Peter van Rauwen. What was the name of the historian? Montias. Yes, that is correct. You've got them all right. You have a score of 12 points. <laughs> Well, what a high scoring round, how appropriate for the grand final. Let's have a look at uh, all of those scores. In sixth place, with six points, Lewis. In joint second place, ten points apiece. Julie, Marga, Dave and Emma. In first place, with twelve points, Jethro. And so we have reached the final leg of the journey, the general knowledge round. And if there is a tie at the end of this round, which is entirely possible, then the number of passes is taken into account and the person with the fewer passes is the winner. And if they're tied on passes as well, then there has to be a tie break. So let's ask Lewis to join us again, please. And you've got a bit of ground to make up, Lewis, but <laughs> two and a half minutes of general knowledge. So you start with six points. And here we go. An arctophile is a collector of what type of stuffed toys? Teddy bears. Yeah. Which former president of Zimbabwe died in 2019, aged 95? Gabby. Yeah. Which actress plays Joyce Byers, whose son Will goes missing in the first series of the Netflix television drama Stranger Things? She's also had starring roles in the Tim Burton films Beetlejuice and Edward Scissorhands. Helena Bonham Carter. Winona Ryder. Which poet and playwright, born in San Lucia in the West Indies in 1930, won the 1992 Nobel Prize in Literature? Albert Camus. Derek Walcott. What's the medical name for the large triangular muscles that cover the shoulder joints in the human body? Their name for their resemblance to a letter of the Greek alphabet? The trapezi uh, trapezoids. Deltoid. In the 1968 film 2001 A Space Odyssey, the supercomputer that turns against the ship's crew has what name? How? Yep. In 1909, which French aviator claimed a £1,000 prize offered by the Daily Mail when he became the first person to pilot an aeroplane across the English Channel? Winberg. 
Blario, which country is the largest by area in Africa? It's mainly desert, but has a coastline on the Mediterranean Sea. Algeria? Yes. A custard dessert covered with sugar, which is then grilled to create a caramelized top layer, has a French name that translates as burnt cream. What's the dessert? Ricotta. Creme brulee. The American singer born Eunice Waymon, who was known for songs such as I Put a Spell on You and My Baby Just Cares for Me, was better known by what professional name? Edith Piaf. Nina Simone. Which British Prime Minister resigned in 1957 after his controversial handling of the Suez Crisis the previous year? Wilson. Anthony Eden. A clear alcoholic spirit from Greece is flavoured with aniseed and other herbs and turns milky white when water is added to it. It's similar to French pastis and Turkish raki. What's it called? Uzo. Yeah. A children's picture book by Maurice Sendak, first published in 1963, tells the story of a boy named Max who becomes king of an imaginary island inhabited by monsters. What's the title of the book? The Little Prince. Where the Wild Things Are. What plant genus, which comprises several hundred species of shrub grown for their colourful flowers, has a name that comes from Greek words for rose and tree? Quercus. Rhododendron. Which Russian composer wrote the 1888 symphonic suite Sherazade? It was inspired by tales from the Thousand and One Nights. Rachmaninoff. Rimsky-Korsakov. What name was given to the first American space shuttle to be launched into orbit? It made its maiden flight in April 1981. Challenger. Columbia. A group of artists that includes John Everett Millet, William Holman Hunt and Dante Gabriel Rossetti, who aimed to revitalize British painting, adopted a collective name in 1848. What name? Uh, the Pre-Raphaelites. The Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood is correct. Uh, no passes, Lewis. You now have a total of 12 points. <laughs> and next up, Julie again, please. And you start out, Julie, as do some others, <laughs> with... Ten points. Let's see how you do with your general knowledge in the race for the title. Here we go. Alopecia is a medical term for the loss of what feature of the human body? The hair. Yep. The breakfast dish Eggs Benedict consists of eggs, ham and hollandaise sauce served on a split and toasted muffin. The eggs are cooked by what method? Poached. Yep. In 2017, an American singer became the first person to gain 100 million followers on Twitter. She's known for hit singles such as California Girls, Firework and Raw. Which singer? Taylor Swift. Katy Perry. The main character of a 1722 novel by Daniel Defoe is variously described in the full title as five times a wife, 12 year a thief, eight year a transported felon in Virginia. Which novel? Mo Flanders. Yes. Which 1942 painting by Edward Hopper depicts three customers seated at the bar of a diner named Phillies? The Night Watch. Night Hawks. Of the six chemical elements known as halogens, only one exists as a liquid at room temperature and pressure. Which one? Chlorine. Bromine. Which Southeast Asian country's national flag consists of a single five-pointed yellow star on a red background? Korea. Vietnam. The political memoir for the record was published in September 2019. Which former British Prime Minister wrote it? Cameron. Yes. What French name for the flowering plant mallow is used in English as a word for a pale shade of purple? Uh, Move. Yes. Which British dramatist devised and directed Abigail's Party? It was broadcast as a television play in 1977 and starred his then wife, Alison Steadman. Mike Lee. Yes. A large brass instrument, similar to a tuba, but played with the tubing encircling the player's body, was named after a famous American composer of military marches who helped design it in the 1890s. Which instrument? Euphonium. Sousaphone. In September 2019, which British Olympic gold medalist won the men's race of the Great North Run for a record six consecutive times? Uh... Mo Salah. No, Mo Farah. The action of the stage musical Kiss Me Kate takes place around a production of a Shakespeare comedy. Which one? Um, Romeo and Juliet. The Taming of the Shrew. What decimal number is written in binary notation as one zero? Two. Yes. Which show won a television BAFTA for Best Drama Series in 2005? It stars David Threlfall as Frank Gallagher, the father of a group of siblings growing up on a Manchester council estate. M bread. Shameless. What bright yellow spice is obtained from the dried root of the plant curcuma longa? It's sometimes called the Indian saffron and is used as an ingredient in Asian cookery and as a dye for clothing. Turmeric. Yes. A word that's used generally to refer to any period of economic decline is technically defined in the UK as two consecutive quarters of negative economic growth as measured by the country's gross domestic product. What's the word? Recession. Is correct. And no passes, Julie. You now have a total of... 19 points. Thank you.
And now, Marga, again, please. And you also start out, Marga, with ten points. The score to beat, as it stands, is 19. Here we go. Which American president was sworn into office in 1963 following the death of John F. Kennedy? Johnson. Yes. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus promises that he will give the keys of the kingdom of heaven to one of his apostles. This apostle is now depicted in art as the guardian of the gates of heaven. Which apostle? St. Peter. Yeah. A variety of cheese-based vegetarian sausages made with breadcrumbs, egg and leek or onion is named after one of the historic counties of Wales. Which county? Brecon. Glamorgan. What adjective derived from Greek is commonly applied to sports drinks that contain salts and minerals in the same concentration as those in the body? Ionized. Isotonic. A rich heiress in the Merchant of Venice and Brutus's wife in Julius Caesar, both by Shakespeare, share the same first name. What name? Ooh, Perdita. Portia. A female fallow deer or roe deer is known as a doe. What's the word for a female red deer? Hind? Yes. Which city on the River Lee is the southernmost city in the Republic of Ireland? Cork? Yes. Which American actress, known for having bleached blonde hair, made her name in the 1930s with films such as Reckless, a Bombshell and Platinum Blonde? Mae West? Jean Harlow. Which English artist and engraver created the pictures Gin Lane and Beer Street in the 1750s? It was part of a campaign to highlight the social problems caused by cheap spirits. Hogarth? Yep. What word of French origin is used in English for the process in a hospital in which the priority for the treatment of patients is decided according to the seriousness of their illness or injury? Triage. Yes. Idris Elba stars as a murder detective and Ruth Wilson as a psychopathic killer in a television crime drama series first shown in 2010. Which series? Luther. Yes. What name for a light, immature Portuguese wine translates into English as green wine? Vinho Verde. Yes. At the 1996 Brit Awards, Michael Jackson's performance at Earth Song was interrupted when a British singer wandered on stage and made various gestures. Which singer? Jarvis Cocker. Yes. In which Caribbean country was the Tonton Makut, a paramilitary police force? It was active from 1959 and was formed to suppress opposition to President François Duvalier, known as Papa Doc. Haiti. Yes. The DWP was formed in 2001 by a merger of existing government departments and policy groups. The letters stand for the Department for Work and... Pensions. Yes. A landmark 1995 ruling that allowed professional footballers to move freely to another club within the EU once their contract had ended is named after the Belgian player who brought the initial challenge. What's his surname? Faf. No. Bosman. Broccoli, cauliflower and cabbage are all members of which plant genus? Um, oh. Grusy form? No, no, you'll be so cross yeah. with yourself, Brassica. No passes, Marga, you have 21 points. <laughs> and now, Dave, again, please. You also start with 10 points. The score to beat, as you have just heard, is... 21. Here we go. Queen Elizabeth II succeeded her father when she came to the throne in 1952. What was his regnal name and number? George VI. Yep. Craig Phillips, Brian Darling and Kate Lawler were the first three series winners of a reality television show which began on Channel 4 in 2000. Which show? Big Brother. Yep. What's the name of the mythical figure whose locker is said to be the grave of anyone who dies at sea? David Jones. Yes. What was the surname of the French physicist who, in 1851, demonstrated the rotation of the Earth by suspending a pendulum from the dome of the Pantheon in Paris? Foucault. Yes. A form of collaboration between a privately owned company and a body such as central government or a local authority is known as a PPP. These letters stand for public-private what? Initiative. Partnership. Oh, Which oh. American world heavyweight boxing champion made 25 consecutive title defences from 1937 to 1948? Marciana. Joe Lewis. Zagreb is the capital city of which former Yugoslav Republic? Croatia. Correct. What's the name of the uncooked vegetable soup from southern Spain that's made mainly from tomatoes, green peppers and cucumber and is served cold? Gaspacho. Yes. The clash in Whitechapel in London between Oswald Mosley's black shirts and various anti-fascist groups in October 1936 is known as the Battle of which street? Capel Street. Yes. The common and the pygmy are the only two living species of a semi-aquatic mammal native to Africa. Which mammal? Um, 
Hippopotamus. Yes. The sequel to the novel The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood was published in 2019. What's its title? The Testaments. Yes. Which Japanese martial art, a form of self-defense, was created by Morihai Ueshiba during the early 20th century? Judo? Aikido. A Spanish singer who had a UK number one single in 1981 with Begin the Begin embarked on a world tour in 2019 to celebrate 50 years in show business. What's his name? Iglesias. Yep. What was the name of the German airship that crashed at Lakehurst, New Jersey in 1937, killing 36 people? The, the disaster effectively ended the use of such craft for commercial Hindenburg. flight. Hindenburg. Correct. When Brasilia was built as the new capital of Brazil in the 1950s, the layout was based on a plan by Lucio Costa, which architect, a former employee of Costa, designed the main public buildings. Neymar. Yes. The chemical formula for ozone consists of one letter and one number. What's the formula? O3. Yes. A famous landscape painting by John Constable of a horse-drawn cart in a river was exhibited at the Royal Academy in 1821 under the title Landscape Noon and was donated to London's National Gallery 65 years later. It's better known by what title? The Hay Wayne. Is correct. No passes, Dave. You now have a total of 24 points. <laughs> So the score is creeping up. Emma, again, please. And uh, that score is now 24 points. Here we go. The pop group, the Bee Gees, was formed by brothers called Barry, Robin and Maurice. What's their surname? Gib. Yep. What word derived from the Latin for bell is a term for the practice of bell ringing? Uh, camp, camp, Campanaldi. Yes. Which sea, part of the North Atlantic between Puerto Rico and Bermuda, is noted as a spawning ground for European eels before they migrate back to a freshwater habitat? Sargasso. Yes. A pony is a slang term for a sum of money. How many pounds is a pony? Fifty. Twenty-five. When Jeremy Corbyn won the Labour Party leadership election in 2015, he defeated Andy Burnham and Liz Kendall, as well as another candidate. Who was the other unsuccessful candidate? Abbott. Yvette Cooper, a mysterious masked hero who rode a horse called Silver, was the title character of an American Western series first shown on the BBC in the 1950s. Which series? The Lone Ranger. Yes. Which future poet laureate, writing as Nicholas Blake, created Nigel Strangeways, a detective who first appeared in the 1935 novel A Question of Proof? Batchman. Cecil Day Lewis. Ilyich Ramirez Sanchez, born in Caracas, Venezuela in 1949, was once one of the world's most wanted men until he was captured in 1994. He's better known by the nickname Carlos the... Jackal. Yes, an Italian soft cheese made by heating whey left over from other cheese production processes has a name that translates as cooked again. What's it called? Ricotta. Yes, in Greek mythology, one of the titans stole fire from the gods and gifted it to humanity. Which titan? Prometheus. Yes, which Russian revolutionary and Marxist theorist was murdered in Mexico City in August 1940? Trotsky. Yeah. What nickname is usually given to Haydn's Symphony No. 94 in G major? The name refers to a sudden loud chord in the second movement. Surprise. Yes. At more than 850 feet, the Transamerica Pyramid is one of the tallest buildings in which city in California? San Francisco? Yes. In aviation, the abbreviation STOL stands for short takeoff and landing. In the similar abbreviation VTOL, what word does the letter V represent? Vertical. Yes, the women's singles title at the 2019 US Open Tennis Championships was won by a Canadian player who beat Serena Williams in the final. What's her name? Osaka. Andrescu. Which Irish actress plays Anne Petunia Dursley in the Harry Potter films? In 2019, she won a BAFTA for Best Supporting Actress for her performance in the television series Killing Eve. Um, Emery. Fiona Shaw, which British, I've started so I'll finish, artist, together with his then wife, Jan Howarth, designed the cover for the Beatles album, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Club Band? Rogers? No, Sir Peter Blake. No passes, Emma. 21 points. <laughs> And finally, Jethro again, please. And Jethro, as you will be very well aware, the score to beat is still 24. And if you beat it, you will become the new mastermind champion. No pressure there. Here we go. 
What gemstone has the highest value of 10 on the Mohs scale, which measures the hardness of minerals? Diamond. Yes, the CPS is a body that provides advice to the police during criminal investigations in England and Wales and decides whether a suspect should face criminal charges. What do the letters CPS stand for? Crown Prosecution Service. Yes, which of the American founding fathers first appeared on the $100 bill in 1914? He was not only a politician, but also a printer, inventor and scientist. Benjamin Franklin. Yes, which note is conventionally played by the oboe in order to tune an orchestra? D. A. What name is given to the Italian dish that consists of small balls of rice stuffed with a savoury filling coated in breadcrumbs and then fried? It roughly translates from Italian as little oranges. Gnocchi. Yeah, okay. Arancini. A work by Jane Austen, which she'd intended to call The Brothers, remained unfinished at the time of her death in 1817. It was published in 1925 under the title Fragment of a Novel, but is now best known by what other title? Sense and Sensibility. Sanditon. The 20th century American photographer born Diane Nemiroff, renowned for her pictures of people on the margins of society, is better known by her married surname. What's her name? Arbus. Yes. Kiefer Sutherland plays the counter-terrorism agent Jack Bauer in a television series first broadcast in 2001. What's the title of the series? 24. Yep. In Celtic mythology, what creature takes the form of a seal in the sea but can assume a human form on land? Its name comes from an alternative word for a seal. Banshee. Selkie. The actress with the first name Bridget, who was starred in films such as It Could Happen to You and Single White Female, had a father called Peter and a grandfather named Henry. Their surname? Pardo. Fonda. The King of Swaziland changed the name of his country in 2018. What's the country's new name? Bechuana Land. Eswatini. Which American inventor born Lester Pulsfuss in 1915 was best known for his solid body electric guitar? He was also a country and jazz musician and played with Bing Crosby, among others. Woody Guthrie. Les Paul. In 2018, Georgia Hall won the Women's British Open and became the first British winner since Scotland's Katrina Matthew in 2009. In which sport? Golf. Yep. What's the term for the official who calls Muslims to prayer from the minaret of a mosque? Imam. The Muezzin. The two main policies of Mikhail Gorbachev's reform of the Soviet Union in the 1980s are usually translated into English as openness and restructuring. The Russian words for these are glasnost and... Perestroika. Yes. The English and the sessile are the two native British species of which tree? Uh, elm. Oak. Which fictional detective and former military policeman created by Lee Child first appeared in the 1997 novel Killing Floor? Poirot. Jack Reacher. What's the name of the, I started, it's all finished, of the secretive government research facility just outside Salisbury? It's home to the Defence Science and Technology Laboratory, which aims to protect the public and military from chemical and biological weapons. GCHQ. It is Porton Down. Jethro, total of 19 points. <laughs> so let's have a look at all of those scores. In sixth place with 12 points, Lewis. In joint fourth place with 19 points apiece, Julie and Jethro. In joint second place, with 21 points apiece, Marga and Emma. In first place, with 24 points, Dave. <laughs> Which means, of course, that Dave is the 2020 Mastermind Champion. <laughs> And, uh, Dave, you are a pub quizzer anyway, extraordinary. Absolutely. What is it, or what was it, about Mastermind that made you think, I've got to have this? Uh, well, I mean, there's so many great quizzes I've had it before, so these are footsteps I'm very happy to follow in. Well, well said. And here it is. Thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. A great champion. And, of course... You don't have to be a champion to uh, take a crack at Mastermind. Uh, don't be put off by the black chair and the bright lights and the ticking clock and all of that. It can actually be a bit of fun as well. Do go to our website, bbc.co.uk stroke mastermind, and you can follow us at Mastermind Quiz. And do join us again next time for more Masterminds. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.
I very much thought I'd, uh, uh, I'd blown that after the general knowledge round. I'd missed a couple of uh, silly ones that I should have got. Is known as a PPP. These letters stand for Public Private what? Initiative. Partnership. Oh, Which oh. Japanese martial art, a form of self-defence, was created by Morihai Ueshiba during the early 20th century? Judo? Aikido. I didn't think I'd done enough. <laughs> uh, because I knew it was two very strong competitors to come after me. It feels a great relief and culmination of uh, several months' work. Final preparation was quite different just because of the nature of the subject was so different. My heat subject was out of shredding, my semi-final subject was fencing at the Olympics. Uh, so, so, so one's a biographical, one, one, one is a sort of a list of uh, medalists largely, uh, and then this is a series of films which it just involves kind of watching them over and over again and picking up on any little thing that might come up. When Holden and Alyssa play darts in Chasing Amy, they're in a bar standing in front of some graffiti that's written on the wall between two toilet doorways. The graffiti reads, and on the eighth day, God created... Beer. I want to say a big uh, thank you to my wife, Lindsay, in the audience, who's put up with uh, me being very antisocial for the last four months uh, studying, and particularly with this final subject when I've been uh, dominating the TV with a bunch of films that she doesn't like. Uh, and my, my parents are also here today supporting, and my sister, Jean, as well. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that uh, all went well for them to see.